So now we've talked about all the different ways you can use social media. How do you put this all together to create a social media strategy, right? Uh, well, I've kind of outlined a seven-step plan here. Um, you know, get buy-in from stakeholders and analyze the situation in terms of what your content currently looks like, what people are saying, what other people, what your competitors are saying, what their customers are saying. Analyze the options. Which way should you go? Um, set objectives. Right? What are the what what should what do you want to achieve with this social media uh, plan? Um, figure out what tactics. How are you actually going to do it. How are you actually going to carry out your strategy? Um, figure out the implement, then actually execute, implement and control, right? And then optimize the results. And then at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some questions you should really discuss um, regardless of your social media strategy, right? Um, so social isn't free. It costs time and often money, right? Especially if you're going to do some sort of ads. Um, people often think of it as a cheap and inexpensive way to do advertising, which you know, compared cost effectively, it probably is a little cheaper than some of the other methods, but it's not free. That's the point. So you need to make sure that whoever has the ability has has a stake in the social media ads and the social media content that you're going to create um, buys into it, right? If it's done poorly, it can discredit the company completely, right? So you want to make sure that all stakeholders are on board, right? And that they really believe in what the purpose of that particular social media strategy is for, right? So the first thing before you even start to really execute or get on board with it, make sure that you have support for the strategy. Once you know that you have support, then you can start doing um, a situation analysis. So what channels, you're, even if you don't have any social media presence at all, which is unlikely nowadays, but even if that is the case, your customers are still going to be talking about your brand and your company on social media somewhere. So figure out where they are, right? Figure out what channels they are using. Is it Pinterest? Is it Vine? Is it long form social media? Is it short form? Is it pictures, right? And then figure out what channels your competitors are actively using, right? And this makes sense even if you already have a presence, right? So figure out any of the content, any places your competitors might be that you're not, for instance, right? Then you need to figure out what are your consumers and potential consumers saying on there? What kinds of conversations are they having? Are they having conversations about your price, about your uh, the content, right? or sorry, about the product features, right? What are, they, what are they really saying? And what kinds of content are they sharing? Right? What kind of content are they actually sharing on there? Once you figure that out, now you have an idea of where you are. And the next thing to do is to think about what options you could use to place yourself in that conversation or to enhance your conversation as it is. Right? Um, now, one of the answers might be you don't want to place yourself in the conversation at all. Right? There could be very vibrant social media platforms out there where there's communities that really developed around uh, your brand or around the industry that your brand is part of that you don't necessarily feel like you should intervene. That to do so might be to interrupt the conversation, to interfere in a place that you might not necessarily belong right, or not necessarily want to be. In that case, you might want to just monitor the conversation, right? And have a plan in place to monitor that conversation so that you know what's going on. It's important to be monitoring, right? Because you never know where one of these conversations is really going to explode or take off or where it's going to come up with a new idea. That being said, if you are creating content, you should determine a small number, and this is, and you have no social media presence, then you should determine a small number or even one channel to concentrate on. The reason why I advocate that is because if you try and spread yourself too thin, that can actually have a very negative impact on the company's image, right? There's nothing worse than saying, um, than Googling a, or, or searching on Twitter for a particular company and seeing they have like two tweets in the past year and that's all they have, right? Or on Facebook, seeing there's not a lot of content there. More and more consumers are using social as an indication of the quality of the company itself, right? So it's important whenever possible to make sure that you um, have a focused, concentrated content there. Um, they'll be okay with the fact that you may not be in some particular channel or some particular space, but if you are there and the content is stale, they'll take that as a negative sign of quality. quality. Um, you also need to think about, do you plan to create a new community or just support a community? And this is kind of the uh, build a place or use a space kind of idea that I talked about earlier, right? Um, you, may, you may be creating content that is just feeding into content that I already have. You may have your own channel or may decide not to have a channel that's very active, but instead simply reply to others. Um, 
And then you need to think about, once you've come up with that, are you going to reach out to influencers? So now that you've decided all of that, right, you have the idea of how you plan to um, involve yourself in social media, right? And the next step is really to start to set your objectives. And these objectives, I'm not going to go over them too much because we've talked about setting objectives in digital before, but you want to use smart objectives, right? These are specific, measurable, assignable, realistic, and time-bound objectives, right? They um, are particular goals for the social media aspects that you can achieve in a particular time, right? Or maybe are on a regular basis, a recurring basis. Um, now, the most important thing about your digital social objectives is to make sure that they contribute both to the overall marketing objectives that you have for the company and the organization and also your business bottom line, right? There's no point in spending a lot of time on social if in some way it's not, it's not supporting a business outcome or a business goal, right? Uh, and you, you often want to make sure that it's doing that in some way that you can measure, 